Hi everybody, Gary here. Well, I've been asked to show you the process of restoring uh, one of my smoothing planes. I'm going to start dismantling this uh, number three plane. This plane was given to me recently. It's had a hard life. You can see that it hasn't been looked after. It's been sitting on somebody's bench, below somebody's bench for a long time, quite rusty, um, hasn't been cared for at all. Uh, when we start on planes, probably the first thing that you guys should familiarize yourself with is getting to know the parts of the plane. So I'm going to post this on YouTube so you can have a look at this. Please familiarize yourself with the parts of the plane. Um, it makes life a lot easier for you when you're talking to your friends, when you're looking for a part, just to know what the parts are, to know what you're talking about. Um, that'll come up later. Uh, you can see here on the bench I've got a few different planes that I've restored. There's a couple here being restored. This is my number six plane. I've had this for over 30, 35 years. It was probably 30 years old when I got it. Uh, that was one of my main planes in my carpentry box when I was uh, working on the tools. I used that extensively for um, uh, hanging doors. So that's um, that's number six restored. There's a little block plane that I use quite a lot. That's just been restored. And we've got a number five and we've got a number four here. Uh, they've been stripped and painted. The frogs in here and the lateral light uh, side movement levers here you can see, all in good condition. We've got the front handles of the front knobs here. Uh, the rosewood, of course, is the back handles of rosewood. These have been lacquered, uh, ready to go ahead. I'm just waiting to uh, finish the blades on those and we'll put those two together. But let's just start on this little number three plane. We'll start and we'll take the front handle off. Of course, you know that the screws on these planes are mostly brass. So just be gentle with the brass. Make sure you've got a flat head screw that fits properly. Drop it in there. Off we go. Let's take that out. Let it wind down. Okay, the shaft's still in there. When we pop that screw out, just put the screwdriver inside the handle. Pop it out, just be careful. Screwdrivers come right through. Give you a nasty cut. Pierce your hands, be quite careful. Um, this little shaft here is still in there. Grab a pair of pliers or a pair of stilsons. Uh, grab it on the on thread section. Nice and tight. Off it comes. Wind it off. Put that up in there. Just loosen your cam here at the front, that'll make your front nut. Unless it's a bit rusty like this one, make it quite easy to come off. Let's get that off. This little plane here is probably 30, 40 years old, not that old. Let's take off the blade and the chipper, chipper at the front, blade at the back. You've got your retaining screw on there. Again, nice flat head screwdriver. Just be gentle, keep your hands clear as best you can. You run through there, you're going to end up with a screwdriver through your hand like that. Nice and gentle, take that screw off, wind it off, throw it in the box. When I was taking this off I noticed that that blade, uh, it's probably been dropped at some stage, you may not see it from here but it's quite buckled, there's a major dip in there. That's probably been on the plane, sitting like that, plane's come off the bench, clip the edge of the bench. When we come to straighten this plane, a word of advice, don't put that on your bench. Uh, whether you put it on the tail of your vice or on your bench and try and hammer it, it's too springy, you won't straighten it. We'll put that in a hydraulic press in the workshop later. As you can see, I'm working in the kitchen today, should be in the workshop. But we'll put that on the hydraulic press later and we'll straighten that on the press. So don't waste your time hammering at it, not going to do you any good. So there's your blade, uh, there's your chipper. We'll take the frog off here and we can see that our lever for the lateral adjustment on the frog is nice and loose. So there's two screws here. There's a retaining screw in the back, and of course you've got your uh, movement to raise your blade up and down here on this handle here. And of course it's left hand thread, so it's not lefty loosey and righty tidy, it's the other way around. Just remember that you come to take it off. So we've got two screws at the front here, same thing, screwdriver in, loosen those off. You won't get it off now obviously, take the handle off, same thing, brass screw there, press that down, take the handle off. If any of these screws are a bit tight, spray a bit of WD-40 down there, leave it half an hour, maybe an hour, take that brass screw out, take the handle off, this handle's a bit tight, a bit of a mess in there, okay, so you can see that somebody's had a bit of a homemade job here, put a piece of cardboard in there, handle's probably come loose, they haven't been able to tighten it up, doesn't look like they, doesn't look like it's stripped, but for some reason they've had it up in there. I don't think we'll keep that bit, probably not need it. Take a handle, 
dub that in our little container there. Let's get the shaft off. Same thing, unwind that. Now we can come over to the back of the frog and there's a there's two screws on here. The top screw holds the retaining plate on and the bottom screw of course is to move your frog back and forward. So that's actually an adjustment screw. So we'll just back that off a little bit. So that's loose now. We can take our that was, um, knob off here, wind her off, let's wind that to the right and get that right off. That's brass of course too, that'll polish up lovely. Put that in the container, this will lift straight off now, provided I take the two front screws out properly. I just loosened them off. Here's number one, there's a little washer in there. Number two, take that out, just pull the frog up, so that washer in there. This frog assembly unit looks pretty good condition or labour for making side adjustment when you drop your blade in you need to do a bit of side adjustment in there that'll look pretty good I won't pull this completely apart uh, I'll take the locating tag off but the rest of the furniture here the labour um, the threaded rod for the for the adjustment I'll leave that on it's in pretty good condition some of you guys if you really want to pull it all apart completely you might be thinking about sandblasting it or acid dipping it, which I don't do, cast iron part. You really don't need to do that to it, unless you're being a bit of a purist. I'll just restore this piece, all in one piece like that. So there we go, there's a frog, pretty much taken apart. We'll take the um, retaining plate up later. We'll screw that adjustment screw right out. That's coming out the hand. That's that out. And there's a body. And as we said before, a bit like the blade. If you can see that in the light, you probably can't see this, but I can see sections of light through the through the ruler here, through the straight edge. So that shows that needs a bit of leveling off, and I'll show you how I level that off in the workshop later. We'll we'll smooth off the sole uh, of the body. We'll clean up the sides. We'll clean all this up, ready for painting. So we'll paint this, and we'll paint the frog all together and we'll clean down the rosewood front handle or knob and the back handle, I'll show you how I'll clean that up get that ready for painting and we'll paint these or we'll lacquer these I should say to come up like this um, there's the finished items and there's how they come off off the plane Hi all, well I've just come down from the upstairs kitchen down to the workshop here, let me get this camera set up as best as I can and we'll have another look at that little plane and we'll go through the various stages of uh, restoring this plane. We might just look at first the handles, uh, the knobs, this is uh, obviously the rear handle, front knob or front handle. Uh, this is one of the handles that I've uh, finished previously and you can see there that I've left a few little dents in it, a few of the imperfections. I could have went ahead and really sanded those out. There's many ways you can do that. You could put it on a wood lathe, sand it out. You could put it on a drill press, sand it out. I tend to think that, that leaving a little bit of a character of a plane, particularly a vintage plane, um, gives it a bit of a, a bit of character, a bit of a talking point. And my planes are planes that I use, so. Um, despite the fact I'm off the tools now and working in management, um, my planes get used, helping friends, doing work around the house, renovating property, whatever. So that's the standard that you can bring it up to if you like. You can go a stage further and once the uh, lacquer is dry, you can sand that down with 1000 grit or 1200 grit, or triple O wire wool, give it a good scuff up and give it a few more coats, it'll be even more smooth and more shiny than that. Of course, that's up to you, that's just a, a preference thing. Um, when I'm on the finishes, um, when I sand these down and get rid of all the gunk and rubbish that's on the handle, I normally give it a, a bit of wipe over with uh, a walnut stain. That seems to go well with the rosewood. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute or two. Um, once it's all sanded, give it a clean with uh, you know, lacquer thinners, turps, I'm not pushing any product by the way. These will be different products than you guys have over in North America. I love going to North America, I love visiting you guys, got friends over there. So you've got different products. They're basically the same products, just different name. Turps, lacquer thinners. This is just a general purpose product. You don't do anything too fancy. Um, 
sand it off, clean it up, give it a wipe down, put a stain on it, and cut it up with this hair. That, as I said, this is acrylic lacquer. This is the sort of finish that they used um, over cars going back 20, 20 years ago. Acrylic lacquers were the popular refinishing product. Today we uh, tend to use a COB system, clear over base, but the acrylic lacquer is great. It dries really fast. Um, you can't really stuff it up too much. If you do stuff it up and get a run in it, you leave it for a while. You can cut that run out, sand it out, polish it up. If you put a lot of paint on it, you can you can polish it up with some buffing compound. And importantly, you'll know uh, when it's dry, when you can no longer smell the solvents evaporating from it. Uh, when there's no smell from it, it's good to cut back, good to polish, or good to add more paint if you want to give it a scuff up. So anyway, uh, getting back to these little handles, there's not much of the original lacquer left on them. Where there is, I normally just get a little blade, scrape it off the gap with the grain. Yeah, you'll feel it come off, it's pretty brittle. You might want to wear a mask if there's a lot of varnish on it. It might take you 15 minutes to clean that handle up, scrape it away. Maybe wear some PPA. Um, protect your, your lungs, um, same with the handle, scrape it off. If you move it through the light you can see little bits of varnish stuck in the, in the little dents. Just give them a scrape off. You don't need to be too too rough with it. And then I get a piece of uh, 240 sandpaper and I'll just sand that down with the grain as best I can, uh, bring it up. So in a moment or two I'll finish sanding these and when I've got that done, what I've got when I've got them nice and clean, and sand it and I'll come across and show you what I do with the stain and the lacquer. Okay so I've got these little handles sanded, uh, cleaned up any grease and dirt on them. They really don't look that much different now. What I want to do is I'll just get a bit of uh, stain here. This is just a, a wipe on wipe off stain. You want to wear rubber gloves or something it's probably a good idea. Keep the stain off your hands. So we just put that stain on, rub it on. You'll get a good idea as we rub the stain on what the finished handle is going to look like. I'll just put that all over the handle. I don't like the uh, all in one stains and varnish. I like the. Put it down there, did that super thing. I like the, um, the type of stain that you just rub on, like this traditional stain, and rub back off. Put that well on there, rub it in. You're going to get a bit on your hands. Wear rubber gloves, as I said. Up to you, just make sure you've covered that whole handle. And that's pretty close to being wiped off. Just turn the rag round. Grab a hold of this, give it a... You don't have to be too enthusiastic. Just give it a bit of a wipe down. Get the worst of the stain off it. Just make sure it looks pretty uniform. So there's the front knob wiped down. The back handle, I noticed uh, that somebody had carved their name in this handle at some stage. I didn't bother trying to sand it out too much. There we go, there's the stain on the handle. Looks fairly uniformed. I'll give that a couple of minutes to dry and those will be ready to to spray. So normally what I do is I get I get a couple of bits of welding wire. Just push it into the hole, make sure it jams can't come out. That's pretty good. Same with the back handle. Just push that into the hole and get that in. And just grab a pair of pliers here. Bend that a little bit. If you can do it like this, where you can wedge it into the to the handle rather than loop the wire out, bend it round. It's a little bit easier, it makes it easier to spray I think. Make it a bit like a spring. A bit more. There you go, that's pretty good. So just give them a couple of seconds to dry and we'll be good to go with that. Now on this lacquer here, rattle can obviously, If you want your cans to last longer when you're finished spraying them, turn them upside down, spray them out, 
wipe the nozzle. I'm going to go ahead now, hope I can get this on screen. Just give these a quick coat, doesn't take much. That's the finish you're going to get, more or less when we're, when we're done. See that beautiful rosewood grain come out? I'll give that a coat. I'll just hang it up over here. Do the same with the back handle. And that's that. I'll give them a few more coats and make sure you do the top of the handle too, which we often forget. We'll come back and have a look at that as they continue to dry. Hey guys, well listen, I've just brought my wife down here because my efforts with the video camera weren't too successful. I couldn't quite get the focus right. So just recapping, we took the front knob and the handle which is hanging up over here beside the milling machine and we washed those with a bit of turpentine, we sanded them down with 240 uh, sandpaper, we give it a wipe over some walnut stain which we have on the bench, we let that dry and this has been sprayed with a rattle can acrylic lacquer. Now if you guys want to go and buy acrylic lacquer in a can and mix it yourself with lacquer thinners Look, by all means do that. I've got spray equipment all around here, air compressor, spray guns. For this sort of work, it's not worth it. Just stick with a rattle can. You'll get tons and tons and tons of work done with a rattle can before you run out of it. So this little knob here has had uh, three or four coats now. Um, that's touch dry. I'd leave it a day. If I wanted a higher gloss or a thicker coat on that, I'd leave it about a day. Same thing. If you can smell the solvent still coming out of it, it's not ready to sand. Once you can't smell the solvent, a little wipe down with 1200 wet and dry or triple O wire wool and dust that off, wipe it with a tack rag, spray it with your lacquer again. And a couple of hints guys, again, when you spray it, each lap of your spray should overlap the other lap by about 50%. And if you're worried that you're getting runs or anything on it, the good idea about the welding wire is once you spray it, you can keep turning it and you'll find you won't get runs, turn it upside and down. If you do happen to get a run out it, on it, um, and it's a little bit tacky, and if you just wet your thumb, you can rub it a bit. You've got to keep it really wet, rub it out, or alternatively, leave it till it's dry. And because it's lacquer, you can sand that run right out and redo it. So I'm going to hang this uh, little knob back up, and after this, the next section will be, we'll get on to the, the cleaning the front and the body of the plane. And if you recall, we're going to take this uh, this blade or this iron, which we see a bit better now it's pretty much spent. We're going to take it over there to the hydraulic press just down behind the bandsaw there and we'll straighten that out. Um, look, ordinarily I might buy a new iron, uh, probably I've got one line around here in the box somewhere, but just for the purposes of the video we'll straighten that out so you can see how we straighten that, clean it out, get rid of all the rust and um, yeah we'll get that one on the next on the next video. Thanks.